What's up everyone? If you're new around here, I'm Alana and together with my husband Sione, we count, collect, and share life lessons from life's many adventures. Sometimes the lessons that we share are from adventures we've gone on ourselves and sometimes they're adventures from other people. And in today's video, we have a lesson from somebody that I have always admired and was a good friend of mine in college. So you're about to meet Jessica. She is one of those people where the longer you know her, the more surprised you are by how good she is at everything she does. But I'll let her explain a little bit more about who she is. Well, I'm Jessica Friedman. I live in Pocatello, Idaho, and I run a blog called Just Kept Secret. And it is all about finding joy in our lives and doing things that cultivate our joy. Um, specifically through um, spirituality and finding our faith in, in Jesus Christ, as well as through wholesome recreation and continuing education, making sure that we're always learning and always growing and taking care of our bodies and taking care of our relationships in our homes and just generally being good stewards of the blessings that God has given us. And, and so that's my hope is to just be able to help people find ways to invite joy, joy and be more intentional about it in their lives. We ended up resonating so much with Jessica on how she started her process of the blog and has now been deciding what to do to take the next steps forward. What made you come up with doing a blog and specifically that area, I guess? Um, I started Just Kept Secret uh, going on 10 years ago now, mm -hmm. I think it was. It originally started, I was, I'm a writer, I love to write, hopefully I'll be published someday, and I started it there was a, a thriving writing community that I was part of and it was just a great way for us to just network with each other and it was it was really great and it was perfect for that time in my life um, I did eventually kind of move away from that um, and that that the whole like that whole community just kind of fizzled <laughs> it wasn't just me we all just kind of stopped doing it but then when I went to grad school in England I decided hey this is a you know I want to blog to just keep in touch with family and friends, let them, you know, I could post pictures and let them know. And it kind of became a thing from there. Like I found that I was having other people were chiming in and like, Oh, hey, I really like your pictures. And so I realized that I had this platform. And so I, it was, it was just kind of something I did for fun. And then I reached a period in my life where I was, I'd lost my job. I hadn't started my business yet. I also run a marketing media studio. Um, and I hadn't started that yet, but I was kind of at this crossroads, like, what do I do with my life? What, where does God want me? What does he want me to do? And I was praying really hard about it. And the answer came back that I needed to work on my blog and make it a, a thing. And I was like, are you kidding? Like a blog? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and I, the more I prayed about it, like, cause I was like, no, that can't be right. Like, there's no way God would tell me to work on a blog, but it, the answer just kept coming back that I needed to work on this. And so I said, okay, well, what should it be? Like, what, how can I, if this is what you want me to do, how can I make it a tool that you can use? How can I make it something that you want? And so it's still an evolving beast. There are, I've got changes that are coming up in the next couple of months that are, are going to make it even different than what it is now, but it's just kind of been me fall, trying at least to follow God and the inspiration that I, I feel like he's giving me. And, and I really feel like he's been asking me to use it as something that will share the good news of Jesus Christ, because that is such a huge part of my life and something that I'm so passionate about. And I don't consider myself a great missionary, but this is a way that I can be a missionary. This is a way that I can share my testimony with others that I'm comfortable with and I'm confident with. If I were to like go and try to share my testimony with somebody in person, I would shut down. Like I can't, I'm freaking out. <laughs> but this is a platform that I'm comfortable with and that I can, I can share it on. So. Awesome. Cool. That is really awesome. If you have been following our videos and our podcasts and everything lately, especially within the last few months, things have been evolving a bit and we've been adding new things into the mix and changing the way we do a few things. Um, but we've been trusting the process as well. And it's interesting when circumstances can sometimes seem like it's throwing a wrench into the way you plan to do things and how it could actually end up being exactly what you need. Jess talks more about that in her life lesson and you definitely want to pay close attention on this one. Well, do you have a life lesson that you would like to share? 
Sure. I was thinking about this. Like I've been thinking about this since you invited me and I was like, what kind of life lesson? And as I was thinking about it today, um, the lesson that, that kind of popped into my head is kind of, it starts with kind of a funny story. Okay. Um, but I, it's something that I just keep, keep coming back to this throughout my life. Um, a few years ago, actually for several years, I worked down at a ranch in New Mexico that's owned by the Boy Scouts. It's called Philmont Scout Ranch. Okay. Um, and I worked as the pony wrangler, which meant that I had this little herd of ponies and a bunch of other little farm animals and the kids would come up. So they, so Philmont has the scouting side where the scouts can go into the back country and they hike for 10 to 12 days. Um, and it's this great transformative experience and wonderful. And we've got 127,000 acres of back country for them to explore. And then they have a training center, which is for adult scouting professionals to come, but they run it like a family camp. So if mom or dad is a scouting professional, they bring their spouse and their kids and then they have other activities and it's like a, a summer camp for everybody else. And so the little kids, I would get the, um, my youngest kids would be three and up to 11 or 12, I think the 12 year olds were my oldest. So they would come up and I'd teach them about agriculture and they'd ride the ponies and teach them about all the other animals. And it was great fun and totally like the best. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I hit the wrong button and I <laughs> made myself go away. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was the time of my life and I just really loved it. And I learned a lot of things while I was there. It was more often than not, it was just me alone up there with the animals because I'd have like a group in the morning and maybe a group in the afternoon or vice versa. But most of my time was just spent up there chilling with the animals. And I found that it was a really great opportunity for Heavenly Father to teach me important lessons. And there was one day in particular that was really hot because we're in New Mexico mm -hmm. and it's super hot. It was, I think, maybe pushing 110 that day. And the ponies were really, really like, I could tell that they were thirsty and, I, and they, they had emptied out their water tank. And so, but we had a group that was coming up to ride. So I didn't have time to let them all loose to go drink at the other water tank. So I thought, well, I'll bring them water in a bucket. And the only buckets I had were the same buckets that I used to feed them their grain in the morning. And so I filled it up with water and I took it in to the ponies and they see this white bucket coming and their first thought is food. And they get super excited and they start whinnying at me like, oh, I want some, I want some. And I would bring the bucket over to them and they would dunk their head into it because they thought, and cause I'd only give them just a little, ponies don't need a lot of grain. So it's just a little bit at the bottom. So they were used to putting their whole heads in there and they would come up snorting nostrils full of water and just give me these looks like you're so mean to us. Why did you do that? And then it would, I would see every single one, I had seven ponies and every single one, I saw this little light bulb moment. Oh, oh I'm really hot and that water, I'm thirsty. And so then they would go back to the bucket and they would drink and they would drink and drink and drink and really take as much of it. I mean, I had to fill that bucket over and over and over again to get everybody the water that they needed. And I was just kind of laughing about this to myself, how each one of those seven ponies had the exact same reaction to this. And I was laughing at it. And then the, the spirit spoke to me and he said, humans do the same thing. They see something coming and they think it's one thing and they get really excited about it. And when it's not what they want or what they're expecting, they get angry about it and they complain and they snort and they blow and they're really upset. And then they realize that's what they actually needed. These ponies, they didn't need grain. They didn't need to eat. They'd be already eaten for the day. They were going to eat again in a couple of hours. What they needed right then was water. And I learned from that that Heavenly Father is aware of what we need, and he is aware of it much better than we are. And so sometimes he sends us these things that we need in our lives, and we get upset about it because it's not what we wanted. It's not the answer that we wanted to hear, or you know, it upsets us in some way. It makes us uncomfortable. But then if we really take the time to think about it, we realize how good it is for us and how much that's really what we need. And so I, I like throughout my life, whenever I come to a period where I'm like, this isn't what I want. <laughs> every single time the spirit says, remember the ponies and the bucket of water. And I try to be a little bit more patient. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying. <laughs> That's an awesome story. Hope you enjoyed that amazing lesson from Jessica. We felt really privileged to be able to even just chat with her and to hear that story firsthand and be able to share it with you. If you want to continue to follow along on her journey and to check out her blog, it is at justkeptsecret.com. And she also has a Pinterest and Facebook at justkeptsecret.
as well. We've got a lot more fun lessons to share with you guys, a lot more videos to share with you guys. I'm a little behind in editing. We've been talking to amazing people and getting some really great stories while everyone's staying home. So always remember that you have the capacity to find joy in any circumstance. And until next time, peace out.